Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Jake Gordon. The Falcons made their final roster cuts, and there's a couple of big takeaways. There weren't too many surprises. I mean, listen, a lot of these guys that were cut were kind of all fringe roster guys. Um, biggest surprises to me were really like Parker Hess, which is like your fourth tight end. Uh, I was surprised they went with John Fitzpatrick. But that might just be something, you know, that came more from Terry Fontenot rather than Arthur Smith. I think Arthur Smith liked Hess. Uh, I mean, he used him a lot. Um, but listen, Fitzpatrick was a draft pick. And if they think they can bring something of similar value, which is really just run blocking, that's why they went with that. Um, you know, obviously we had Jalen Mayfield cut early, earlier in the week. Darren Hall was a little bit surprising. Um, I think that's another one of those big takeaways. It's just the 2021 draft class kind of like starting to fade its way out. The guys who just haven't cut it, they finally cut ties with. I think that's one of the biggest surprises. And overall depth, which we've talked a lot about uh, leading up to this, just needs to be improved. So I think we're going to see a lot of, of guys added over the next couple of days. Um, and uh, But that definitely needs to improve. Because if guys get injured, this goes from a team we think can make the playoffs to something very bad. Yeah, they got they turned into the Falcons from last year. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I think the most surprising thing was definitely Parker has um, Godwin. Not even going to try to say his last name. Uh, Aguabike, I think is how you say it. Uh, I kind of thought he had a chance to make it. Uh, Timmy Horn was pretty surprising too. I assume they yeah. they're pretty confident they can keep him on the practice squad at least. Uh, but you also like we also have to consider the fact that like uh, you know this is where Terry Fontenot supposedly you know made his money in new Orleans was picking up guys off waivers and things like that. Did it with Demario Davis. Uh, there are a few other people, uh, there are a few other players that he picked up when he was in new Orleans. So this is his time to shine. If, uh, if he's going to scoop somebody up, this is supposedly, you know, where he makes his bed. So that'll be interesting to see. Yeah. I mean, he's done it. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say he's done it so far in Atlanta, but I mean, he hasn't had money to work with his entire time until this off season. And we've seen him make a lot of, you know, under the radar signings that have proven very valuable, most notably Cordell Patterson, who is still on the roster. But I, yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I, I, I truthfully wasn't surprised by anything. Uh, the real thing, the one thing that stands out to me about the whole thing, when you talk about the depth is the offensive line, like after the starting five, like I looked at those guys and I said, who the hell are these guys? I mean, I know that I've watched them in the preseason, but realistically, who the hell are these guys? Like it would be malpractice. It would be malpractice hypothetically if someone gets injured and you put your second year starting starting quarterback behind any one of those guys. If, if they have to go against the team starters, I might puke for Desmond Ritter. Like I will feel terrible because it's going to look ugly. It is going to look ugly. And I think, if there's one area that like absolutely they have to pick up at least one guy, if not two or three, it's the offensive line. Cause after the starting five, it is hideous. It is atrocious. It makes you sick. It makes you sick for anyone that, I mean, we want to see Bijan thrive. If those guys have to start, it's going to be disgusting. Another thing, six cornerbacks when Jeff Akuda and Mike Hughes, we saw the Falcons working out Malcolm Butler yesterday. I don't know if Malcolm Butler is necessarily the guy, the guy hasn't played since 2020, I believe maybe 2021. Yeah, no, 2020. 20, I, but they've got to add cornerback depth too. I mean, there's there has to be some signings because cornerback depth was something that we were talking about over the offseason. It's like, oh, look, the Falcons finally have some depth in the cornerback room. We're not even at week one, and we're already like depth, depth dissipated. I mean, Darren Hall's gone. Cornell Armstrong's on the IR. IR. Not like those guys were great, but they were depth pieces. Mike Hughes is injured. Jeff Akuda Jeff might, not play, is too, yeah. might not play week one. They went, Right now they have four healthy corners going into week one. So that has to be addressed as well. I think both of those spots we're going to see guys added before week one. Yeah, and, it, you know, I've, I'm not trying to be captain hindsight like I know everything in the world. But you, you bring up the 2021 draft class, and there were plenty of guys at both of those positions that I liked way more than the guys that they took, especially Jalen Mayfield. I remember Quinn Miners was a guy. Uh, me and Alex were, were big fans of just he was kind of like a goofy looking guy, but he's actually one of the better guards in the entire league right now. Um, Trey you know, Smith, something like, I think was in that class, yeah. Trey Smith, Creed Humphrey, guys like that that had medicals, maybe, or something that the Falcons just didn't take a chance on. And they went with, I guess, what they would consider to be safer players because they needed bodies. And you know, they just, they just didn't really cut it for the most part. <laughs> I mean, that what we're looking at potentially. You know, if Richie Grant and Kyle Pitts become really good players, then I think you can still call it a success just because if you get two really good players out of one draft class, it's, you know, that you, you can live with that. But, yeah, yeah I, I just think they could have done better then. I've always felt that way about that draft class. But 
who knows, you know, there's still plenty of time left for those guys to turn things around. Yeah, I mean, I remember specifically when Jalen Mayfield was taken in the third round, people that really pay attention to the draft. I'm not a huge – you're much more of a draft person than I am. Uh, but I remember specifically people being like, really? This guy in the third round? Like, I think everyone thought that was a reach, and he just couldn't cut it in any way. I, I, I think soft. I said – I think you, I you drafted a soft offensive lineman. Like that's that was my main thing. Like, why would you want a soft offensive lineman at any at any? They point? even said when they drafted him, it's like, yeah, he needs to get stronger. It's like, dude, you're drafting a guy in the third round that needs to get stronger. Like, come on. Like, what are we like? Like, what are we doing? And I, and I said it earlier in the week. I think Jalen Mayfield might actually be the worst pass blocking offensive lineman I've in the NFL. I've ever laid two eyes. On. So somebody brought this up. Do you remember? I I I, I kind of blocked this from my memory. Do you remember the first game Arthur Smith coached? Whenever uh, we played Philadelphia, and he just got took to the shed, man. He had like a one PFF grade, which is hilarious. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I probably have never seen it again. Yeah. He got absolutely embarrassed that game. It was hard to watch. I was I remember that game. Matt Ryan got killed that game. I think he got sacked like seven or eight times. I, and that I was, was before the Eagles were even that good. <laughs> no, it was embarrassing. I think that was the first game of Arthur Smith and Seriani. And like everyone was like, all right, like we could win this game. Oh, or yeah. Yeah. Go in there and just get absolutely abused. Like we had no idea what we were doing. And at that Jaylen point, Hurts ran for like 150 yards. He was even dropping dimes on us. And I was like, what is going on? What is going on? But yeah, I, I, Jalen Mayfield was terrible. Uh, Darren Hall, obviously, I, I was a little surprised by I that. Thought he was, I, thought he was, I thought he played fine last year. He must have had a I thought he was fine. Or... I thought he was fine for a reserve backup. Like, yeah. it, it, I mean, I, I definitely thought he'd be kept, especially with the injuries. But I mean, yeah. I. I I guess this is the point where we're going to see like Terry Fondo. I wonder if this is going to be a thing. Like you give these guys two years and if they don't cut it after two years, we're cutting the fat. Like, uh, cause Jalen Mayfield didn't deserve two years. They gave him, they gave him two plus years. Uh, he probably should have been cut after week one after that Philly, after that, I, I would have been like, all right, yeah, we've seen enough. You got a one PFF grade. We don't need to see anymore. Yeah, I do like uh, Alex did make a good point too in, in the article he wrote up on the site. Uh, at least they're willing to cut their losses because we saw in the last regime, I think Beasley got another contract. <laughs> I mean, he didn't technically get another contract, but he didn't get a fifth year. Um, <clears throat> Which is an, a story that, I, like, the funniest part about that is you saw the Vic Beasley, the Vic Beasley red flags. You heard Thomas Dimitrov after the fact talk about how he knew about his red flags and they still gave him that fifth year. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess that I guess that's a positive. I mean, it's hard to look at positives when you're cutting guys after two seasons that were drafted in the third and fourth round. But yes, at least they are not giving them second contracts. I don't like. Uh, I still I still can't get over the Vic Beasley story. His first day at Titans camp, and they were talking about not playing because of COVID. He's like, "Yeah, <laughs> we're not playing." They're like, well, he's more. like, he's like, we should boycott because of the civil rights thing too. He's like, yeah, oh, that's what it was. Yeah, he's yeah, like, we yeah. should boycott. Kind of, and the elevator story is hilarious too. He gets stuck on the elevator before, like during a game day, like a game day, not a practice. Stuck on the elevator, and he's hoping to not even play. He's he's hoping to not even play. I mean, that's who this guy was. Thomas Dimitrov knew that, and they still offered him a new contract. So I guess it could always be worse. I guess it could always be worse. But I definitely think you look at that 2021 draft class, and you better hope Richie Grant turns into a legitimate starter, and you better hope Kyle Pitts turns into superstar, which uh, I got a little birdie Especially saying. Most of the guys take it after Pitts. If you got, really got a little birdie saying he might not be as good as we all think. But we'll, we'll see. Well, yeah, I will. We will. We will see. Well, health wise, health wise, health wise, oh, okay. going off last year. Coming up after the break, Charlie Morton tosses another gem, and the Braves beat the Rockies. We're going to talk about.